Hello, so this equation here describes how the displacement varies with time for SHM. Of course, it need not be sine, it can be cosine, can be negative sine, negative cosine, but today I feel like sinusoidal. So let's go with sine today, all right? So if this is how x varies with time, how would the velocity v vary with time? Easy, right? Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So if we differentiate this function, we get velocity. So v is omega x naught cosine omega t. When you differentiate sine, you get cosine, right? And then there's the chain rule thing. So omega will pop up to give you omega x naught. If this is how v varies with time, then how would the acceleration vary with time? Ah, same thing, right? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So when we differentiate this thing, we get a is equal to negative omega square x naught sine omega t. When you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine. That's where the negative sign comes from. And remember the chain rule again, so the omega will pop out again. That's why you got omega square here. So with just two simple steps, we have derived the formula for velocity and acceleration of a simple harmonic motion. And not only that, now remember x naught is the amplitude, right? Because sine omega t varies between negative 1 and 1. So x varies between negative x naught and x naught. That's why x naught is the amplitude. Now look at this thing here. Cosine omega t also varies between negative 1 and 1, which means v varies between uh, negative omega x naught and omega x naught, which means omega x naught is the maximum speed of the SHM. Ooh la la, so same trick here, yeah? So acceleration varies between negative omega square x naught and omega square x naught, and therefore omega square x naught is the maximum acceleration of an SHM. Let's plot them out uh, in graphs. So this is the displacement sine omega t, yeah? So this is the velocity, cosine omega t. And this is the acceleration, negative sine omega t. Students always ask, eh, why do I uh, draw the three graphs with the same amplitude? Now I do it just for convenience, yeah? This is actually x naught. This is actually omega x naught. This is actually omega square x naught. It's meaningless to compare the magnitude of velocity to the magnitude of displacement. Out of convenience, I just plot the three graphs to have the same amplitude. My intention is to show you that along the time axis, they all vary sinusoidally with time. They are just misaligned by a quarter of a period, in fact. Acceleration leads velocity by a quarter of period, and velocity in turn leads the displacement by a quarter of a period. Why do I say lead? Because A reaches its maximum first before V reaches its maximum before X reaches its maximum. Which makes sense really because acceleration determines how your velocity change, right? And velocity determines how your displacement change. That's why A leads V leads X. Now let's talk about the velocity here. Where do you get maximum velocity? Oh, at the equilibrium positions. Yeah, see? Maximum V, X is zero. Most negative V, X is zero. So velocity uh, hits maximum twice yeah, in one oscillation. Shown by the pink arrow here, you can see clearly the velocity hits maximum uh, two times, once when the swing is rightward and once when the swing is leftward. What about the acceleration? When do we get maximum acceleration? We get the most positive acceleration at one extreme position and we get the most negative acceleration at the other extreme position. So illustrated uh, with a blue arrow here, you can see the acceleration hits maximum twice during one oscillation. Once when it's at the leftmost extreme position and once when it's at its rightmost extreme position. If you have on the Viking amusement ride before, you might have noticed that you're moving at the fastest speed at the equilibrium position, right? That's when the, the, you got the most wind blowing on your face. On the other hand, you feel the most acceleration at the extreme positions. That's the most suspenseful part of the ride, isn't it? When you feel the most weightless, Ah, that's because you are experiencing the most extreme acceleration at the two extreme positions. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!